Good afternoon, I am Andrew Haney, and today I'd like to talk about the last of the Marvel movies that I need to talk about. It's been a long time since I've uploaded a video on this channel, I'm fully aware of that. I've been very busy, I just graduated college, and I also have a very intense job, and I've had a week off because I've graduated, so right now I can make some more videos. Most of my videos I make for my family and my friends. This channel is not a very popular channel, I'm aware of that. So I'm making these videos just for fun. Without further ado, let's talk about the remaining Marvel movies from 2018 till, let's say 2019, because there hasn't been any new Marvel movies yet. First we have Black Panther, which everyone and their grandma will say is overrated. I'm not disagreeing, but I really like this movie. This is one of the better, I won't say one of the best, but one of the better Marvel movies. The villain, Killmonger, is an incredible villain. He not only chews the scenery so well, his motivations are fantastic, his plan is brilliant, his performance by Michael B. Jordan is great, and partially even wins. Spoilers, obviously, where he changes T'Challa's mind. And on that subject, the rest of the characters are really good. T'Challa's arc on who should he trust is really good, and what he should do as king is really good. Shuri, M'Baku, and Nkoye are really likable characters. Uh, I like Claus, Andy Sarkis' character too, he chews the scenery really well. Agent Ross does not need to be there at all, for the most part. I know he's the token white guy, and I'm not offended by that, but he could have done more with this character. Because he is a little interesting, but he's not necessary, if you know what I mean. Uh, the special effects are horrendous. I'll get that out of the way. Also, in Black Panther's case, the rhinos were horrible. I've seen three out of the five species of rhinos in the wild. My profile picture is me petting a geriatric rhino in Kenya. Uh, that rhino, by the way, is uh, the last was the last male northern white rhino. He was Sudan. I have seen uh, greater one-horned rhinos in, in Nepal. And I, in Kenya, I've seen both black and white rhinos. Trust me, those rhinos in Black Panther are so freaking fake. But let's move on. The screenplay is fine. It's not the best screenplay in the Marvel movies, but it's not even close to the worst. In fact, it's probably one of the better ones, actually. Uh, the art direction is incredible. Uh, the score is great. Uh, I'll address the elephant in the room right now. This did not deserve a Best Picture nomination. I would rather something like Into the Spider-Verse, which I will talk about soon, be nominated instead of this. But Really? I mean, I, I understand kind of why this had a lot of cultural impact, and it is a solid movie. And, yeah, it's pretty important for the black community because it doesn't have African Americans, or just Africans in this case, experiencing slavery or poverty, so... I can understand from that perspective why this was nominated, but I do not agree with the nomination at all. Then again, I would argue nominating Bohemian Rhapsody, Vice, and fucking green book for best picture is much more of a stretch because Black Panther is much better than those three movies. Side note, why the fuck did green book win best picture? Like it doesn't even deserve best screenplay. That should have been the favorite. Oh well, fuck it. Uh, I don't, I'm not the Academy, so oh well. Anyway, I like Black Panther 7 out of 10. Next we've got Avengers Infinity War, which is my favorite MCU film. I love this movie. Absolutely love it. It's one of the best Marvel movies made. I am not giving it a higher score than an 8. I don't think it's a masterpiece, but it's so damn good. It handles the tone perfectly. The pacing is absolutely perfect. Most of the characters are done pretty well. Um, I'll name the ones that are most important. Thanos is a great character. Not just a great villain, but a great character. His mocap performance by Josh Brolin is fantastic. One of the best performances in the Marvel movies. And he is, without a doubt, the best MCU villain. The months before the Wars released, that title absolutely belonged to Killmonger. But now I'm going to talk about Thanos. Thanos is a fantastic villain, especially in, um, for those who haven't seen it, spoilers, but he wins. He succeeds in his goal. I'm not the first person to say this, but he's actually the protagonist of the film. He has easily the most screen time, over 25 minutes of screen time, which is more than anybody else. He actually has an arc, 
Very few characters in this movie besides him have an arc. I will name the others that do. He has a lot of development. I really like his performance, but I don't want to talk about Thanos for too long. His plan is is bonkers to wipe out half the universe, and he is wrong about overpopulation. The universe's resources are not finite, it's just how we use them. There's a great video by Renegade Cut that I highly recommend, I'll link that eventually. But I'll talk about the other characters. Gamora and Star-Lord, the two guardians that have the most development in this movie, are great characters. I don't like how Star-Lord is handled, but I understand why they did it. I, I totally get why Star-Lord behaved the way he did when he learned about Gamora's death. And speaking of which, Gamora's character's arc is handled perfectly in this movie. Iron Man and Doctor Strange, originally I didn't like them, and yes, it is stupid to ask for them to say no shit Sherlock to each other. Uh, especially since there actually is a Sherlock reference in the movie that's much more subtle, where this happens. So I say we take the fight to him. Doctor. Do you concur? Yeah, that's better. That's much better. Because Sherlock actually said that line to Watson occasionally. So that makes more sense than, Duh, no shit, Sherlock, and then Deadpool walks in. Oh, God. Uh, so bad. I hate when fans try to write Marvel movies, but anyway. Uh, I do like their characters. They're really cool. I really like the desperation that both of them go through when they're fighting Thanos in the Titan battle. That's really cool. Uh, Thor is at his, arguably at his best in this movie. I mean, he stole the show for me when Thanos didn't. But I don't like how they tried to redo everything that Ragnarok did. Like, Hulk gets shafted. Half the population of Asgard dies before Thanos snaps his fingers. Um, Heimdall dies, fair enough. Loki dies, yikes. Uh, after their re especially after his redemption, that was a little sad for Loki. Uh, but Thor also gets his eye back, which is a little dumb. I guess because Hemsworth didn't want to wear a CGI eye patch, I don't know. Uh, he also gets a weapon, which is cool, but it kind of invalidates the point of Ragnarok, but whatever. Though that being said, Thor is awesome in this movie. My biggest problem with this movie is that every other character that I haven't mentioned, with a few exceptions, maybe like Spider-Man and maybe Banner, with, the, with a few exceptions, everybody else is either a plot device or background noise. Captain America is a back is background noise. Black Panther's background noise. Like very few other characters have any sort of development in this movie. All right, so that's my biggest problem with the movie. I still like seeing them, and they're the action is incredible. This is the best action in all the MCU, easily. Yeah, I said it. It's probably the best uh, second act end points of any wrong running TV series. Which yes, I'll get to the controversy. The MCU feels more like a long-running TV series than a movie franchise, and I don't think that's a bad thing. And also, I'll ask the the other controversy. I think Scorsese is right about Marvel movies. I may have said this before, but he is right that these films are not artistic. They're not cinema. That does not mean they're bad, because they're not. I mean, a few of them might be. I like the Marvel movies, but I'm not going to act like they're some giant work of art. They're not. They're made to sell toy and money. That's not really a bad thing. Most superhero movies are, anyway. So, I love Infinity War. It's my favorite MCU film. 8 out of 10. Let's move on. The, the next movie I have on here is Deadpool 2. I like it more than the first. Quite a bit, actually. It's not a great movie, but it's better than the first, in almost every way. I'd rather a film tell a decent story, and have a decent villain, and have good characters, than have a really shitty villain, a shitty story, and mediocre characters, and say, Oh, look how mediocre our characters are, and how bad our story is. That's not how it works, Deadpool. So that's, I mean, I like the first one okay, but this one actually does the former rather than the latter. There's a lot of twists and turns in this movie. There are times when I actually did not know where the story was going. It's not an original story, obviously, but it's out of the box for Deadpool. I do like how the action show is more human side of him, where he gets to protect this kid. He doesn't want this kid to be killed by Cable or the pedophile camp counselors. Also, Juggernaut is cool. I was not expecting Juggernaut to be in this movie. I don't give two shits about him as a character, though. Uh, Deadpool is a little annoying, but he's not bad. He, I actually think he's better in this one than he is in the first one. Uh, Domino's a cool character. 
I like Cable's deadpan delivery and contrast to Deadpool's funny delivery. It's actually pretty good. Uh, this isn't a great movie, though. The special effects are terrible. Uh, almost on par with Black Panthers at points, actually. So, in the case of Deadpool 2, some of the humor is hit and miss. A lot of it hits really well. Like, the end credit scene is so funny! Like, I was laughing as I was leaving the theater. And some other jokes, like the dubstep joke, that's dumb. I have seen the extended cut, and I think it's significantly worse than the theatrical cut. Uh, one, a couple jokes are pretty funny. A couple of the added jokes that are put in there are amusing, but a lot of the replaced jokes in the extended cut, super duper cut or whatever it's called, are really bad. Like, they're much worse. And the added scenes don't add anything to this movie at all. But I like the opening scene. I like it a lot. And yeah, it is cliche how they kill off the love interest, but I do like how Deadpool handles it. Not just the suicide, but also how he gets really depressed but doesn't want that to happen to other people in his life. Also, Colossus looks so fake, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead does nothing in this movie. Also, I will address the controversy. I'm totally fine with her being a lesbian. I mean, if you didn't think she was a lesbian before this movie, I would be shocked. I mean, come on. The way she acts, she's obviously a lesbian. But I do like how they don't parade it before the movie comes out, and then, act, and then make sure it adds nothing. They just, it was a nice touch to have her date an Asian woman. That was nice. It's not forced, as in, they didn't parade it beforehand, <clears throat> onward. Uh, they didn't uh, have it last for a couple seconds, <clears throat> Sorry, Lord Uh You get the idea. Uh, they don't queer bait it. I'm not gay, I'm not LGBT, I am actually a straight man. So I cannot be in their shoes at all, so I'm not even going to try to, but I'm not really a fan of how studios try to parade, hey, we have an LGBT character or couple, we have an interracial couple, and they parade it before the movie comes out, only for it to not matter at all and last for five seconds. That is terrible, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I like Deadpool too. it's pretty good. Next we have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Those of you who saw one of my previous videos know, I don't like the first Ant-Man movie at all. I like Ant-Man and the Wasp a lot more. I don't think it's a good movie, it's actually really bland. But I don't think it's a bad one either. It's okay. I'm giving it a 5 right now, it's closer to a 6 than a 4. I like how it's mostly just a big farce. It's like a screwball comedy, but it's not really that inventive as it should be. There's some really bad jokes, um, Evangeline Lilly has no character. That I don't like. I mean, she's badass, but he doesn't have a character. There's not much else I can say about this movie, it's okay, I don't really recommend it though. Uh, next we got- I got that Knock, knock, the devil in. Ugh. <laughs> anyway, I hate that song, but I kind of like this movie. Uh, you can probably guess by my rating, I don't think it's a good movie at all. Venom is a lot of fun, but not in the way it thinks it is. It's, I mean, Tom Hardy is actually really good as Venom. I think he's great. Like, his performance isn't that bad, unironically. There's some moments that got a huge laugh out of me, like the lobster tank scene. That was hilarious. But parts of it are also kind of boring. It's not even that long. It's like 90 minutes or something like that? I don't know. I don't remember. I've only seen it once. Uh, Venom CGI is really bad. This is not a good movie. I think the writing is really bad. The dialogue is terrible. I don't think it's the worst movie in the world. It's not even the worst Spider-Man movie. It's better than... If you count it, it's better than Amazing Spider-Man 2 by a mile. But I'm not recommending it, unless for a so bad it's good movie, which I would recommend it actually, because this movie's hilarious, but not in the ways it thinks it is. Next, we've got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I'm not going to give my rating out just yet, because I want to give a little bit of a story on how I saw this movie. I was first invited to see this movie by my friends in December of 2018, about a week after it came out. Uh, I had already seen Aquaman at that point, and I, I'll talk about that eventually in another video, but uh, I, didn't, I wasn't very impressed by the trailers, and I was rubbed the wrong way by the Emoji movie, which is made by this studio. I'm sh they made a few other movies between Emoji Movie and this, but that, I hadn't seen any of them, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, they invited me, I'm like, yeah, it looks cute, I'll see, I'll probably enjoy it. And 
I loved it. <laughs> There's my rating. This is my favorite Marvel movie ever made. This is better than Logan. This is like top two or three superhero movies ever. Top two if you don't count The Incredibles. This is how you make an animated superhero movie that's not called The Incredibles. This is how you make a Spider-Man movie. This is how you make a superhero movie. This is how you make an animated movie. This is how you make a movie. Likeable characters, incredible animation, great directing, perfectly paced, great tone throughout, hilarious dialogue, really well written dialogue too, lots of emotional moments. This is, this is everything I want in an animated movie and more. This is everything I want in a superhero movie and more. Ah, I love this movie so much. There's not much else to say, it's a masterpiece. Go see it, if you haven't already. It's one of my favorite animated movies ever. Okay, on to 2019, Captain Marvel, which I don't like. I've already talked about it in my uh, Best and Worst 2019 video. There's not much less I can say, but I don't really like it. I think the art direction is incredible. I don't hate Brie Larson as a person or as an actress, but she's not very good on this. I like Samuel L. Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn, though. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, Avengers Endgame, which, as surprising as this may sound, has not aged well for me at all. I'll address a few things that I like about this movie. One, the third act. Absolutely incredible. Best conclusion to the MCU movie by far. How they handle Iron Man and Cap is absolutely brilliant. I do like that. Nebula, and although I don't like his character, Scott, and also Clint are really good in this movie. I really like those three characters as well. The production design and the effects and the sound design and the score are incredible. In fact, I actually think those things, with the exception of maybe production design, I think sound design and the music was snubbed for an Oscar nomination. Definitely more deserved than fucking Rise of Skywalker. I hate that movie. But anyway, those are among the things I like in this movie. And I do think the positives outweigh the negatives, but I've got a lot of negatives. I don't like how they handle Hulk. I hate how they handle Thor. Thanos is not the same Thanos that we've known this whole time. So there goes most of the tension. The first two acts are so boring. The time travel doesn't make sense. And I'm not gonna nitpick the time travel because the only movie I have seen that doesn't have time travel that's contradictory is uh, 12 Monkeys by Terry Gilliam, which is a fantastic movie, I might add, but I'm getting too far ahead of myself. I don't love Avengers Endgame. I don't think it's a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's a good movie. My 6 out of 10 rating is closer to a 7 than a 5. I don't even think it's top 10 MCU though, as shocking as that may sound. That's all I'm gonna say. It's one of my brother's favorite movies. It's not one of my favorite movies, unfortunately. I'm sorry to say it, but this film did not age well for me. It's a great conclusion, but not a great movie. Uh, one more thing I'll say, I don't like how they handle Black Widow in this movie. She doesn't have much of an arc, but there's not a lot to her character despite the very understandable situation she's in. So, uh, I don't really know if I can talk about the other characters that much because they don't really... Rhodey and Rocket are cool, but they don't have a lot to do in this movie, unfortunately. Captain Marvel gets insultingly sidelined. So does Okoye. I like her character. She just got sidelined. Like, what the fuck? Moving on. Dark Phoenix is a piece of shit. I've seen it twice, and it's still boring, it's still dull, still bad, don't see it. It's not the worst X-Men movie, though. In fact, I actually think X-Men Origins Wolverine is worse than I made it out to be. I think that one is worse than this one. But next we got Spider-Man Far From Home, which I love. This movie is aged just as perfectly for me. This is my favorite live-action Spider-Man. I'm trying to think if there's much else I can say about it. It's a great movie. It's a top five MCU movie for me. The characters are all likable. There's some scenes I don't like. I also don't like the drone stuff. That stuff was dumb. That's what prevents this from being any higher than like my fifth favorite MCU movie, but whatever. The action is much more creative than Homecoming, and it's a much better movie than Homecoming, too. And it's much better than Endgame. There, I said it. Don't at me. Aside from the twist, which is pathetically predictable, haha, ha, very funny. Aside from that, I really like Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, fantastic villain, easily. One of the best, actually. Ned is really likable, I like MJ. Uh, Peter is really solid here, much more than he was in Homecoming, and even Civil War and Infinity War, and also Endgame. There's not much else I can say about this movie, except I love it. It's not my favorite Spider-Man movie, that goes to Into the Spider-Verse, but this is a great movie.
Highly recommend it. So that's all of the Marvel movies until Black Widow and later The Eternals, which will come out uh, sometime next year, I guess. I'm not really looking forward to Black Widow. Even without COVID, I probably wouldn't see it in theaters, because with the exception of Doctor Strange 2, because it's directed by Sam Raimi, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, which I'll see that because it's white tea. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which I don't know when that's coming out, and the next Spider-Man movie, with those exceptions, I'm not going to see any future MCU movies in theaters opening weekend at all, because I'm not really looking forward to them. A few days from now, hopefully, I'll make a DCEU video where I'll talk about all the DCEU movies. I'm not really looking forward to doing that, because with a few exceptions, I don't really like the DCEU, but we'll get to that eventually. Even though the lockdowns have ended, uh, please stay home. Please, at least wear a mask. I know I'm not wearing a mask for this video, but I'm in my house. Either way, please prevent the spread of the coronavirus. So that's all I have to say. See you next time.